Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion Premium Linear Bino Viewer. Now, I'm really excited about this one because it's a lot different than your average bino viewer that you might have had experience with in the past. Um, so I want to tell you about that, but first let's get through the boring kind of basic uh, parts to it, and then I'll show you what uh, kind of sets this apart from your average one. Uh, first of all, it weighs one pound, eight ounces, so just keep that in mind when you're adding the weight of your eyepieces and everything else to your setup. Um, it's not super heavy, but it is, it's, it's dense. It will add a little bit to your, your uh, telescope setup. Uh, the front is an inch and a quarter nozzle. It's threaded for filters. It's got a little safety retaining uh, 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 groove on it here um, that in case your telescope set screw is not quite fully attached, it won't fall out. Or if you're using this at an angle and the weight on the diagonal is a little too much and it, and it starts to sink down, it's not gonna fall out because of that safety retaining groove there. On top, it's got compression rings, so it grabs each eyepiece solidly and it centers them. It doesn't, with a, with a set screw, it might push it off to one side. So it keeps it nice and centered and it doesn't mar the surface of your eyepiece. Um, now, let's talk about some of the uh, detailed features and what sets this apart from your average bino viewer. Now, we call this a linear bino viewer because, as you can see, to adjust the inner eye distance, you just pull it apart. It actually does not use prisms, which is a big plus. Um, on, if you can imagine a pair of binoculars or an average bino viewer, you bend it in and out this way, and those prisms are angling, and sometimes it can be difficult to keep that precisely in alignment. So there's no prisms, it actually uses mirrors down here, and you're not actually misaligning anything as you move this uh, in and out to adjust to your eye. Most bino viewers uh, require a large amount of back focus in order to reach focus. Um, it's not uncommon to have like three to four inches of back focus, rendering it not usable on telescopes such as reflectors because they only have a, an inch or two usually of, uh, of back focus. An average bino viewer would work no problem on a schmidt cascarane on a refractor, on a Mac, but not on a reflector without using maybe a Barlow in the bottom, which then you've got the disadvantage of it amplifying the magnification. In some cases, a lot, like three to four X uh, over what the eyepiece that you're putting in uh, would normally do. Well, with this bino viewer, it has zero back focus and it doesn't use a Barlow to do that. So you've got the advantage of being able to use it on any telescope, reflector, Sonian, obviously, reflector, uh, cast grain, refractor, Mac, anything, uh, with no back focus requirements. If it'll reach focus with your eyepiece, it'll reach focus with a bino viewer. And it does it without using the Barlow. So if you put a 20 millimeter eyepiece in here, you'll get 20 millimeter, whatever the magnification would be with the 20 millimeter. It's not amplifying it any. So low power, wide field views are within the range of a bino viewer like this. The way it does that is the lens is built inside. So remember I said there's no prisms, there's mirrors up top, and then there are a series of lenses, and uh, they're made out of lanthanum glass. So it's basically a low dispersion, an extra low dispersion ED um, glass, so you don't get any false color or uh, other defects inherent in the bino viewer itself. It's an erect image prism. It's basically a transfer lens, so it brings the light from the bottom up to the top, corrects the image, and allows you to use it without the need of a Barlow and with no back focus. So what that means is if you were to put this straight through on a refractor or a Mac or a Cassegrain, you'd actually get a, a correct image, a non-inverted, non-rotated, upright image. So uh, on a Cassegrain, on a refractor, it's upright. If you wanted to use this in a diagonal, which is probably what you're going to be doing most of the time if you're using a refractor or a Cassegrain, uh, so you're looking down this way and the telescope's pointed up this way, you can use it with a standard diagonal. The image will be upside down. Now for astronomy, that's not gonna matter, right? There is no up and down in space. Uh, but just keep that in mind, since this is an erecting uh, uh, lens system built in, if you use it with a diagonal in a uh, standard Cassegrain or refractor, you will get an upside down image. Now there's a way to fix that. We've introduced the Orion pentaprism which when used with a refractor or a Cassegrain and the bino viewer gives you a correct image. So that would be what you'd wanna do if you wanna use this for daytime terrestrial viewing. You'd be looking downwards into it and you get a correct image. But for astronomy, an upside down image doesn't matter and you've got the ability to use two eyes uh, and get a nice wide field of view at low magnification. 
So having said all that, you get a very nice, sharp, bright uh, image. Uh, speaking of bright, I don't think I mentioned the, the mirrors used inside are dielectric coated. So you're losing very, very little light as the, uh, as the incoming light bounces off of the mirrors. Coupled with the lanthanum glass, it's an excellent quality image. Now what I haven't mentioned is what the experience is with a Bino Viewer. If, you, if you're not experienced with using one, you'll be very pleasantly surprised. It's a, it's a stereo, okay, I hesitate to say it's a stereo image because technically it's not, right? You're still going through a single telescope looking at the moon or looking at a planet or a deep sky object. But your brain is used to working in stereo, so the effect is pretty three-dimensional. I mean, when you look at the moon through a Bino Viewer, it is amazing how much more detail you see, and it seems to make the mountains pop out of the background and the craters look like they've got depth to them. Just squinting through one eye, you can get used to it with a telescope, and I'm sure you are used to it if you've been using a telescope, but it does not compare with using two eyes uh, looking through a Bino Viewer. It's one of my favorite types of views. Now, since the Bino Viewer doesn't require a Barlow, you can use it at low power, and of course at high power if you put different eyepieces into it. It works for all types of objects in the sky. Uh, the moon, like I said, amazing at any magnification. Planets at high power look almost three-dimensional and definitely show more detail than you're used to uh, squinting through one eye. But putting low-power eyepieces in here and looking at the Orion Nebula or the M13, the globular cluster in Hercules, it's a beautiful view when you can do a low-power uh, view of the object, which is pretty much impossible with a normal Bino Viewer, but is allowable with, with something like this. The linear Bino Viewer comes with this nice deluxe hard-shelled case um, that's very roomy. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's got room for the Bino Viewer, obviously. It's already cut out. Uh, but then it gives you room for whatever eyepieces you choose to use with the Bino Viewer. So you'll probably be able to fit uh, one set of eyepieces in with the, uh, with the Bino Viewer. Close it up. It's got these nice, thick, durable latches. And handle on top. Off you go. All right, well, there you have it. This is the Orion Premium Linear Bino Viewer. Uh, if you want to use this for some daytime terrestrial viewing with a diagonal, I suggest looking at the Orion Pentaprism uh, to go along with it. And uh, I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised what you can do uh, with a Bino Viewer using both eyes. Thank you very much. Clear skies.